are trying to build a public also. And sometimes you see at the Metropolitan Opera, you see Bohem, you see Tosca, you see Carmen, that is, is played three seasons, one after the other. You know, so we have to build a public that will be coming to see again an opera that they remember and they like to see it again. And then we, that's the insurance of what we do. You know? We have been shuffling certain titles like the, like the Tosca, like the Carmen, like the Butterfly, like the Traviata. Those are certainly the four more popular, also the flute and uh, Figaro. We did it also, we did it very close. We did it two times in three years, I suppose. Those are the insurance for us, you know. And we always try to look for a completely different cast. And it's done in every opera house. So if you go to Vienna, you have all that repertoire, you have it every season, you know. So we try not to do it two seasons in a row. We always leave at least two seasons or three. To do the to do the revival of those productions, so that's the that's what we are doing. And sometimes we have to do some things because that's the only the only point of salvation at that moment, you know. So we said, well, this for sure it could be could be done. Like uh, this year, uh, in the, we are doing a we are doing a Rigoletto also soon. That it, it was we have to do a Verdi opera. And so the Rigoletto, it came by default. If you find the artist, if you, you see, so Rigoletto is an opera that the public will always be happy to see. So some of the things we just had to, to put there for economical reasons, because some of the productions you are doing, they cost so much. And some of them you don't even know if they are going to cost even more. It is a gambling, you see, it is a gambling there always into why you have to put these productions every two, every two years or every three, depending how popular they are. For instance, I mean, a production of Frau Neschatten, okay? So, uh, Frau Neschatten cannot be performed every two years, every three years, you know? So that's to give you an example. Uh, we, we have the Ariadne uh, Naxos, which we own the production. It was a tremendous success. It's not very easy. You know, so we have to, for those ones, we have to wait about five, six years, you know, seven, some, sometimes. I say that I wish that we are, we were already at the moment that we can do the revival of Frau Neschatten, you know, and that we can do uh, something like Grendel revival also, and it wouldn't cost the company uh, really the amount of money that it might cost dangerously uh, because of the amount of time and the selling of the tickets. But certainly we will, little by little, if we have all the trust of the public, we'll do anything. Yeah. I just to dovetail on what, what uh, Placido has said, you know, this is not different from any opera company in the world. If I mean, if you went through the archives of every major opera company, you would find the same uh, and the bigger the city, the more it's true. It's true in London, it's true in New York, it's true in Vienna. Um, th th we're not any different from any of the rest of them. Besides, uh, when you say, well, we saw Carmen two years ago, or we saw Level One uh, uh, three years ago, uh, why don't we have a new production? First of all, it, it's simply unreality. No company does that. They have a comp you want to amortize a production over 10, 15, you know, five, 10, 15 years. But besides which, I personally, I don't know anybody else in this room, but I am not bored at Carmen because I heard it two years ago. Uh, I'm not bored because I, got, uh, I love Carmen every time I hear it. In fact, when I conduct Carmen after 12 performances, the last performance, I'm very sad because I don't want it to be over. And I feel that way about most repertory. I mean, I, this, I just noticed um, I conducted the Beethoven Fifth uh, this summer at, um, in uh, with the Chicago Symphony in Ravinia. Uh, and then I looked in the back of my score to see when I last conducted it, you'd think every year, right? Ten years had gone by. Beethoven Fifth, that's considered the Carmen of, of, of the symphonic repertoire. <laughs> and I said, oh, we've all heard the Beethoven Fifth, we've all, can we do something interesting? The fact is I've done the Beethoven Fifth more rarely than almost every other 
uh, comparable piece simply because everybody says, oh, well, we've had that. Maybe we can you know, have something else. So uh, the fact is that I don't, get, I don't think re real music lovers get bored of great pieces. I don't think so. I think that the public does not get bored of great pieces. And I think the public is very happy. After all, part of the thing, what is classical music? What is classical art? What is classical literature? Are works that demand that you come back to them over and over and over again. And when you go back to them, you see more than you did the last time. So I don't think that, I think it is a, a seductive thing to say, yes, 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 it must always be new. But the fact is, there is something new about Carmen every time. Now, maybe the performance is good, maybe the performance is bad, maybe you liked it this time and you didn't you know, more than that. That's the variable, and that's the beauty of classical art, that you go back and it's different every time. Uh, I think that what we are doing is not essentially different from what we're doing. The question isn't, do you do those pieces? It's how you do those pieces. And that, I think, is what the question should be. Thanks.